Greets you YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. We all have our gadgets and all of them need some electricity. Usually we use batteries or a power supply. Today I will start a small project to use solar energy to power our devices during the whole year. If we want to do so, we have to answer the following questions. First, what size the solar panel has to be in order to power our device? And second, what size of battery we need to survive times without sun? These questions lead to the next row of questions. How much energy can we harvest in one year? How much energy does our device use during this year? How is the energy distributed throughout the day and throughout the year? How long do we want to survive with reduced or without sun? Many questions, so let's start. But wait, I have to warn you, this will not be easy stuff. But saving the planet with green energy will never be easy. We will use a simple design, a solar panel, a charging unit, a battery, and our ESP8266. How much energy can we harvest in one year? This depends mainly on three factors. The location where your solar panel is placed and its direction towards the sun, the size of the panel, and the efficiency of your circuit to transfer solar energy to your ESP. The location question can be answered by looking at this map. If you want to know it more precise, you can go to the solargis.com page. I live near Basel in Switzerland and we get about 1200 kilowatt hours per square meter of solar energy per year. What does this mean in relation to run an ESP8266 without deep sleep, which uses about 100 milliampere on 3.3 volt, which equals 0.33 watt? The year has 8760 hours. If we divide the yearly energy by these hours, we get the watts. 1200 kilowatt hours divided by 8760 hours equals roughly 137 watt per square meter. This is the total radiation from the sun. Unfortunately, solar cells only have an efficiency of about 15%. So we only get about 20 watt per square meter out of the solar cell. This is further reduced by the efficiency of our charging device and the loss of the battery charging process. Let's assume we lose another 33% in this stage. Then we get a usable energy of only 14 watt per square meter or 1.4 milliwatt per square centimeter. Because one square meter equals 10,000 square centimeters. With these two numbers, we can calculate the size of the needed panel. 0.33 divided by 14 equals 236 square centimeters, which is around 15 times 15 centimeters. So this panel should be sufficient to power my ESP8266 the whole year round. Great! But let's quickly calculate the other way around. The supplier of this panel writes that it delivers 4.5 watt, but our ESP only needs 0.33 watts. This is a big difference. So do you know where I made the error in my calculation? You do not find an error? You're right, there is no error. At least that is what I hope. Just an additional problem. The sun does not shine all the time. It fluctuates during each day and also over the month and the specifications of the panel only show us the peak power and not in Switzerland but somewhere else with lots of sun. And maybe it is even a little bit exaggerated as usual with the specifications on AliExpress. So we have to continue our calculations. 
but because this is boring and the sun shines outside, we first do some tests. I bought a couple of small solar panels and one bigger one and want to do some tests now. The test setup is simple. I place the solar panel into the sun and connect it to my new electronic load. An electronic load is a simple device. It behaves like a variable resistor plus a voltage and a ampere meter. The only difference is that an electronic load automatically adjusts the resistor to either a constant current, a constant voltage or a constant power. And it automatically calculates and displays the power, which is handy for these experiments. Filming today is not easy, but I hope you can see the numbers. I start without any load and measure the open voltage of the solar cell of about 6.5 volts. If I start to draw current, we see that the power increases while the voltage drops a little. Suddenly, the voltage drops and we lose most of the power. If I try again with smaller steps, we see that we can draw a maximum current of about 550 milliampere and get 2.8 volt output. As soon as I draw more current, the voltage drops dramatically. Why is that? This is a characteristic of solar panels. Here is the result of my measurements of the 16 times 16 centimeter panel. And here is the theoretical curve. They match pretty good in shape. And here you see the expression MPP or maximum power point. In order to get maximum power out of the panel, we always have to operate at this point. Unfortunately, this point moves if the lightning conditions of the panel change and we have to find it again. There are special devices available which do exactly that. They are called MPPT or Maximum Power Point Trackers. I will look at this topic in a future video. You can buy monocrystalline or polycrystalline cells or panels. Monocrystalline silicon is used for most of our electronic chips and panels made from this material theoretically have a higher efficiency, which means they should produce more electricity with a defined light intensity. They should also be more expensive than polycrystalline modules. In reality, the differences are small and we should not bother too much about that. You can easily see the difference between mono or poly modules as they are usually called. The mono modules are darker, nearly black and the polys are grey. You find the results of a sunny afternoon work in this chart. Be aware that the results are not completely dependable since smallest clouds can have an influence and I had to do my measurements in series, not in parallel. And in the middle, I had to make a stop to drink a beer because the weather was really hot. We see that I got a power per square centimeters between five and 10 milliwatt. We also have to consider that not the whole area of the panel is used to convert light. There are also areas for connecting the different cells because one cell only produces around 0.5 volts. So far we know how much energy we can harvest over the whole year and also during a sunny day. Let's now continue to find out the real size of the needed panel and the size of the battery big enough to power our ESP safely during the whole year. Here in Basel we get 2.6 times less solar radiance in December than in July and the sun disappears every night for a few hours. And especially in winter, we experience bad weather and sometimes we do not see the sun for days. This creates three additional problems for our project. Make sure our device survives the long winter nights. Make sure our device survives a period of bad weather without sun and make sure our device survives the whole month of December. Of course, these problems differ in different locations. This is why I show the formulas and the sources of my data. With this, you should be able to make your own calculations. 
The first problem can be solved with a battery, which is charged during the day and discharged during night. Let's quickly calculate the size of this battery for the shortest days in December. Day length is about 8.5 hours and night, therefore 15 and a half hours. So our battery has to be 15.5 hours times 0.1 ampere equals 1.6 ampere hour. This is less than the capacity of a 18650 cell. Now the second problem. If we assume bad weather without sun for two weeks, we need a bigger battery. 14 days times 24 hours times 0.1 ampere equals 34 ampere hour. Here we need about 14 18650 cells in parallel. If this is the worst case, we know now the size of the battery. The next thing is the calculation of the size of the solar panel. We can assume that the bad weather conditions are included in our average values for a particular location. So we can design our solar panel for the worst month of the year. We take our 1.62 kilowatt hour per square meter per day, average solar energy for December, divide it by 24 hours and multiply it by the 10% to get the electrical energy. It is 6.7 watt per square meter. Because we need 0.33 watt, we need a solar panel of 448 square centimeters to harvest enough energy to drive our device throughout December. These numbers are for an average year, but these days we never have average years. So maybe we have to add a little to account for that and we end up with a panel size of about 25 times 25 centimeters which equals 625 square centimeters. Pretty big. So to summarize we can make the same calculation for Dubai where it is quite hot in summer. First we search the radiation per square meter for the worst month of the year. It is 3.68 kilowatt hour per square meter per day. Then we divide this value by 242 and divide the power needs of our device by this number. And we get the size of our panel, 197 square centimeters. The battery size can be smaller because we do not need to anticipate 14 days of consecutive bad weather. Let's assume five days. The day is 10.5 hours long and therefore the night 13.5 hours. So the size of the battery is only 12 ampere hours, which is about 5 18650 cells. Some of you might remember my videos about sleep modes of the ESP8266. If we are able to reduce the power consumption of our device by a factor of 10, our battery size is reduced to 1 18650 for Switzerland and our solar panel to the size of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And if we would be able to reduce power consumption even more, for example by using LoRa instead of Wi-Fi, the battery and the panel size would be reduced even more. Great! Today we calculated the size of a solar panel and the battery for a year-long usage. In one of the next videos, we have to concentrate on the charging device between the solar panel and the ESP. This device has to fulfill quite some needs. First, find and keep the MPP under all lighting conditions to get maximum power from the solar panel. Two, make sure we have a constant voltage of 3.3 volt for the ESP. Three, switch charging of battery off if it reaches 4.2 volts. This is particularly important because we had to design the solar panel for the worst month of the year. And in all other months, we will have far too much energy. 4. Protect the battery from too low voltage. And 5. Signal low voltage to the ESP in order to make it possible to react accordingly. For example, send a message out. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.